Art versus science. This guy represents my entire middle and high school careers. He teaches the tech. What do I mean by that? First day of school, get your book, and from that point forward, just move through it. Doesn't matter what's going on in the world, doesn't matter what questions we raise, doesn't matter if there's anything even relatable in the newspaper. It's about getting through the textbook. And as you know from everything you've read already, thanks to the 21st Century Skills site and the PDF that you've read, that just doesn't cut it anymore. If we start with the basis of innovation, creativity, and tolerance for risk taking is the strength of the United States, again, go back to 21st Century Skills, then how can we just simply teach the textbook and think we're preparing kids for the world of today and tomorrow? And who are these kids that we're dealing with? They are the largest part of the population right now, 36% of our total population. 31% of these kids, 18 and under, are minorities. They are much more diverse than those of us in the 36 and up age bracket. They have come of age along with the internet, and to them, technology is just cool stuff. They play with, they work with, whatever. There's no need to be afraid or treat it like it's anything special. It just is. This is key. To these kids, information has been universally available and free. What do I mean by that? When we were kids, if we wanted information, we had to go to the library and ask the librarian, you know, where do I find the books about butterflies? And he or she would walk us down the aisle or to point us to the card catalog. But these kids don't wait for an adult to show them where to find the books. They go on to Yahooligans. They go to AOL Kids. They find the information out for themselves. The idea that they should have to wait for an adult to say, if you want to learn about bugs, turn to page 36 in your book is insane. When they have questions, they want to find the answers. We need to work with this instead of quelling it because it's not the appropriate moment. And this is also key. To these kids, community is a digital place of common interest. All of us in this class should understand that. You will be working with me and with your cadre mates via Tapped In, via eCollege, via YouTube, via threaded discussion. Just because you're not sitting next to me doesn't mean that your communication with me is any less real. To these kids, playing tic-tac-toe online in Club Penguin with a friend is just as real as going outside and playing it with the kid next door. So this whole kind of time and space separation that we as adults still have in our heads, to them is irrelevant. They're just as comfortable asking questions to the NASA scientist online as they are to the kids sitting next to them in class. Now the older kids have an insane amount of expendable income and quite a bit of say in how household expenditures are made these days. There's a reason that on Nickelodeon and Teen Nick, they're advertising cars and refrigerators and big ticket items. Because nowadays, kids have a say in these kinds of purchases because the parents are so crazy busy that if mom says, we need a new minivan, the kid says, oh yeah, the Astro Van is good. If it's going to work out financially, why not just get the Astro Van and keep the peace? What does that mean in the classroom? It means these kids aren't too interested in sitting down, being told to be quiet, and not having their opinions and interests paid attention to. We need to find ways to bring their curiosity and their interests into the work that we design. And even the little bunnies still have this stuff going on. They're all very, very technologically savvy. And the digital divide is still in existence but not as much because public libraries have computers, schools have computers, preschools have computers. Fisher Price makes computers for little kids. This is insane. So what does this all mean to us? What does this have to do with art versus science? Well, when we look at curriculum design, there are quite a few people out there who think that teacher-proof curriculum, scripted curriculum, read the placard, do what it says, and just give the kids the tests, is scientific, so that means it's better. But is it really? We as people are social beings. Education is a social enterprise. You cannot learn in a vacuum. You may be able to memorize facts for a short period of time, 
but you will lose those facts unless you have to deal with other human beings and negotiate, discuss, come to an agreement on the meaning, how the pieces fit together. Again, my social constructivist roots. Unless you have to figure out what this really means, whatever it is, you'll have it momentarily and then you'll lose it. Scripted curriculum is a crutch for a new teacher to help them get going. But to consider it to be the panacea to get our kids up to snuff on basic skills is really unfair to both the educational professional and the individual child. There's no way someone sitting in Oshkosh, Bagash, Wisconsin is going to be able to design the perfect curriculum for your 20 little kids, each of whom has different background experiences, slightly different terminology as far as what this means or that means. Someone ate breakfast, someone didn't, someone hasn't seen their mommy in three weeks, someone can't hear very well. Come on. It is our job as educational professionals to augment and design curriculum so that everyone in the class has the best opportunity to learn, not just the kids that have the easiest learning propensities to reach. Scripted curriculum. Easy to buy, but what happens when we get it out in the real world? It falls apart. It kablooies. It doesn't really work. So what does that mean for us in the classroom? It means we take everything we can get our hands on and we truly, here it comes, backwards design what the kids need to know and learn and be able to do to be able to truly have demonstrated that they've acquired the knowledge. You can't teach the text. You teach the content. Teaching, designing good curriculum is an art and a science. It's the two combined, not one versus the other. Our job is to serve our students. We manipulate and massage what materials we have to get the concepts to the kids. Here are a couple great examples. Paperclipsmovie.com. Please, I'm begging you, take a minute and go visit this. Uh, it was a curriculum project done in uh, Tennessee. The movie, if you ever get a chance to see it, please do. Listen to what the teachers say about their experience coaching the kids through this project. It's unbelievable. And this one just came out recently. You can still find it on the WashingtonPost.com, all about students in Southern Maryland who began interviewing some of the local residents who a hundred years old about what the history of that area was for them. So my friends, here's our goal. <laughs> to teach our students in a fashion that is so rich and well-rounded and meaningful that it has transference beyond the classroom walls. That they really can take what they learn in the classroom and go out and explore the world and learn more and scaffold everything that comes at them to be meaningful and usable. That is an art and a science.